Okay, so yesterday uh, we talked about how we can use hidden Markov models to represent a set of protein sequences. And we have uh, decided we, uh, that representing uh, the conserved columns of amino acids uh, would be a good idea uh, to represent them as states. Uh, Here is one example. Uh, and I also talked to you about some uh, elements of the hidden, uh, profile hidden Markov model. So needing a match state, an insertion state, a delete state, what would their purposes be? Okay, we are going to talk about them in detail. But if we do not have, I mean, this, this picture shows, uh, this is not a regular profile hidden Markov, uh, profile hidden Markov model structure. We don't, we don't see these different types of states here. The match and delete states are not shown here. It just shows you an example how we could uh, model the columns of the hidden Markov model uh, by using sta uh, columns of the multiple sequence alignment uh, by the states of a hidden Markov model. Okay, so here's an example. So if we are given a multiple sequence alignment like this, it's, it's uh, DNA sequences, there are five of them, five DNA sequences, and you can see uh, if these are part of the same family, if these are members of the same family, we can see there are six conserved columns. For, and this conservation, we need to decide um, whether, how a, whether a column is conserved or not. Uh, by making some decisions. Do we need to have all nucleotides the same in that column? Or do we require majority of them, 75%? So we need to first decide what is a conserved column in order to have a state for that. And here we decide that it's the majority of the column to have be the same uh, nucleotide. And therefore the first, second, third, and the uh, the last three columns of this alignment, okay, this is an alignment, it shows the shared nucleotides, the conserved, the, the nucleotides that are common in all these five sequences. Uh, and we represent them by these six states, okay? We have six states which represent each of these conserved regions in this uh, family of sequences. And we have here an additional state which is used to model this region in the middle. Okay, this region in the middle, some members of the same family may have additional nucleotides generated uh, which, are, uh, which, which, which may not be very critical to be a member of the same family. But uh, we need to account for such, such sequences. If we do not have uh, this if we do not have this state here, and if we say that uh, our hidden Markov model consists of uh, six states, and we proceed from one to the other uh, with 1.0 1, 1 percent, 1 1.0 probability, we go this way, and we don't have this, then we would not be able to model the three of the sequences: uh, this one, the second one, and the last. I mean, the second one, the third one, and the last one three of these five sequences would not be, uh, we would not be able to model them, generate them from these six states. We could only generate sequences that have six nucleotides. If, if a sequence have more than six nucleotides, we would not be able to generate them from this hidden Markov model. Because as you can see, in the, this hidden Markov model, the transition probabilities are all one and proceeds from here, this is the, the start state, the start probability of this state is 1.0, and uh, uh, we, we don't have any uh, loops that go back. So if this is the Markov model shows something special, I mean, it's just, it can just model something uh, with six time steps. If we did not, again, I repeat, if, imagine uh, for a moment, we do not have this, okay, we do not have this top state, and also this transition probability, is 1.0. If it was like that, it means that you are, you, this the Markov model can only generate sequences of length 6. And if there was a, another sequence in which uh, there was uh, some nucleotides are inserted by evolutionary events, they are inserted in this middle region, we would not be able to say that these sequences, although they share the first three and last three amino acids, they would not belong to the Sido Markov model because the probability that this HMM generated those sequences would be zero. 
because there are more than six nucleotides. So therefore, to account for such cases, to account for these evolutionary differences, like these insertions in the middle by these three sequences, we add this new state. And as you can see, this new state, what we have here in this new state is, it has a loop onto itself. So theoretically, we can add as many nucleotides as we want in the middle region. We can have 100, we can add 100 nucleotides in that region. But uh, the probability would be very low if you add 100 nucleotides because the, uh, the self-transition probability the, 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 the is 0 0.4, meaning that if you added an amino acid, uh, you are going to add the second one with 0 0.4 probability. You are going to add the third one again with 0 0.4 probability. So adding four amino acids, for example, at that region is going to be 0 0.4, 0 0.4 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.4. So the probability is decreasing as you want to insert more amino acids. So uh, a, a sequence which have less inserted regions is going to have a higher probability of being generated by this model. And now the next thing is, how do we determine what are the emission and what are the transition? After we have decided on the states, okay, these are the states, six states and one insertion state, how do we determine the emission and transmission uh, probabilities? Uh, transmission probabilities between states and emission probabilities at a state. For example, what does this first state represent? It represents the first column in which, and we look at the first column, what do we see? It's mostly A's, okay? It's the nucleotide is mostly A, and we have a T. So to model uh, the, this family, we want to say that a sequence which starts with, more, with, more, uh, with an A is likely to belong to this uh, family. And the emission probabilities, we can just look at the frequencies of nucleotides as the first column. 80% A, 20% T. And this can be our uh, emission probabilities. A, 0 0.A, and T, 0 0.2. So the, the things in the, inside these boxes show the emission probabilities. Now, what is the problem with this choice? A sequence which starts with a G or a C, it will, I mean, the probability that this HMM generated this sequence is going to be again zero, okay? If you have a, uh, a sequence, imagine you have a uh, nucleotide sequence. If I say, okay, G, C, A, A, T, C, okay? If I ask you this, this sequence, G, T, A, uh, sorry, G, G, C, A, A, T, C, does this belong to this family? By, by looking, it's almost, I mean, five of the six amino acids are very similar to this family, but we will not be able to, we, if we ask this question to the HMM, the HMM is going to say no this sequence could not have been generated by this HMM because it starts with a G. And we said that the first column, the first letter, the first thing that is emitted should be either an A or a T. And if we use this hidden Markov model as a generative sequence to generate simulated uh, synthetic sequences that could have belonged to this family, all of them would either start with A or T, okay? And if you generate, for example, 1,000 sequences by following random paths through this HMM, you could have generated 1,000 random sequences. Again, using, the, using a random number generator each time, for example, you, you generate a random number. If it's less than 0 0.8, you start your sequence with A. If it's greater than 0 0.8, you start your sequence with T, okay? And then the next step, you the transition probability to the next state is 1.0, so you don't need to generate a random number there. Uh, for certain, you are going to, from this state, for certainty, you are going to go to this state. There is no other choice. And for the other state, what we have is 80% C, 20% G. Again, we toss a, uh, I mean, we generate a random number, and based on the outcome, we can say the second letter is going to be C or G. So we can continue this, and after we come to the end of the sequence, this is our like end state. After we are at this state, as you can see, there are no outgoing arrows. 
this is the end of, if you come to that hidden Markov model state, your uh, generation stops. You cannot go anywhere. You cannot uh, even go to the same state itself. This is the end state. Actually, in the original hidden Markov model definition, there is no such thing as end state. Okay? Uh, this is something uh, specific to these profile hidden Markov models. But uh, you can generate these sequences randomly. Uh, we, so it's going to give you an idea how family, the, if there were more than five sequences, if there were 100 sequences, how would they look like? The members of this uh, family, how would they look like? You can get an idea. But none of them is going to start with a C or a G. So that's, uh, we are going to see how we can solve this problem. How we can say, I mean, actually we have seen this problem. We have talked about uh, idea about of what the pseudo counts. You remember when we were computing the position PSSMs? We, we imaginary uh, thought, I mean, inserted the existence of uh, nucleotides at least once. So we can do the same thing for this. Uh, we can, uh, the emission probabilities, even if the probability is small, we could see, we could generate a C or a G, even at the first column. Even if we do not observe C or Gs in our actual sequences, we can add them uh, virtually by using pseudo counts. We can say that with small probability, we can observe a C or a G, even at the first column. And the main reason would be to, to avoid this problem. To make this, being to, to make this to be possible to be generated by this HMF. Now, uh, so this, this was not a, a regular profile hidden Markov model uh, structure. Uh, hidden Markov, profile hidden Markov model structure looks like this. Okay, this is a widely accepted structure, uh, but this is, uh, this is not the only solution. You could design uh, other hidden Markov models with different states, uh, with different types of states, uh, which could be used to represent sequences. This is only one solution, but it's widely accepted. It's very popular, uh, and it looks like this. We have two uh, states designated for begin and end, okay? And the, the, these red rectangle states, rectangular states, they denote the match states. These are our conserved columns in the alignment or conserved regions, common regions in our sequences are represented by these red regions, and each red region, each red rectangle represents a single amino acid, common amino acid, a single amino acid. They do not represent a pattern of arbitrary length. They represent a single. So because from at each of these uh, rectangles, we can emit a single symbol, a single amino acid or nucleotide. And we have these diamond-shaped states. Uh, this is, I mean, th their shapes are only for visualization, okay? I mean, uh, they do not, I mean, you could have drawn all these states with circles, because it wouldn't matter, okay? Just to, uh, for instructive purposes, uh, for uh, better interpretation of the model, we just denote them differently, because semantically they, they, they mean different states. They are insert state, and these uh, circular ones are delete states. Uh, as you can see, we don't have all the arrows, all the transitions between uh, the states. For example, from the begin state, uh, this one does not allow you to insert arbitrary amino acids at the beginning of sequences. Okay, that's actually uh, a, a drawback of this model. The original uh, hidden profile hidden Markov models, this is the uh, complete structure which have, I mean, it's the same, it's very, if, as you can see, they are very similar. The layout is different, the delete, states, the delete states are on top of the insert states, but it doesn't matter, that's just the layout, okay? You could have uh, drawn this profile in the Marco model from top to bottom, it wouldn't matter, I mean, that's just the layout uh, here. Uh, now, this one shows you that from the begin state, we can have some inserted amino acids, uh, in, the, in the beginning of the sequence, then we can, this delete state will allow us to omit the first match uh, column if that, if an amino acid, if, if, if a protein sequence does not have the first conserved column, 
we should be able to skip the first match state. So the delete, the main purpose of these delete states is to match, uh, sorry, is to skip the match states. And theoretically, actually, you can you can follow a path like this: begin, insert something, and then delete state, delete, 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 and end. <laughs> okay, so this will basically uh, a, a protein sequence which doesn't have anything in common with the match columns could belong to this family with just some garbage inserted in the middle and following the delete states we could have come up with the end state and we'll have some probability we could generate a sequence like this but uh, in practice we don't want uh, this to happen so how can you avoid such situation by having these transition probability is very small, okay? If you make these transition from delete state to another delete state, if you make that very small, 0.001, it will, for example, it will say that you can follow such a path, but the probability of that path is going to be very low, okay? That sequence, another sequence which follows all the match states is going to have a much higher probability to be generated by the Sid Marco model. Okay, so the Tito Marco model is all about probabilities. We are comparing probabilities to see whether a certain sequence is more likely to be generated compared to another sequence. Okay, so these are this is our, how our general profile Tito Marco model looks like, and I repeat the main purpose of the insertion st states are to model repetitive. Uh, regions uh, inserted amino acids within conserved regions within a, within a conserved region between two conserved columns if you have an amino acid sequence which varies between uh, member to member in, in one sequence we may have just look at this example they are all members of the same family one of them has one inserted amino acids in this region the other has three inserted not three nucleotides inserted in this region. The other is one and two of them have no inserted uh, nucleotides in this region. To model such varying uh, insertion regions, we have these diamond states which have loops. Uh, these are the only, as, as you can see, these are the only states in this model that we can uh, revisit. Uh, so they, they have the only ones with this loop transition. All the other ones, if you, map, if you visit this state, then you are going to proceed to another state and you will never come to this state again. There is no uh, loop that, get, that goes, for example, imagine you visited this state, you can go to this one, this one, or this one, and after you visit this one, you, you can never go back to here or here to visit this again. So there's always a transition uh, from this begin state to the end state. So we are going to go forward. And such a model usually is used to globally model a protein sequence, meaning that beginning from the uh, first amino acid of the sequence going towards the end, end amino acid of the protein sequence. So it's like similar to a global alignment. It's, it's, it takes into account all the amino acids uh, of, the, of a protein or all the nucleotides of a DNA. None of them is discarded. We generate all the, all the amino acids or all the nucleotides within the uh, protein or DNA sequence. However, there are also extensions, variants, for non-global alignments. So we can change this model. We can add some... This, this, this is called the flanking model, which uh, tells you that in the, in, at the beginning or at, at the end of the sequence, you can have as many as uh, this inserted amino acids you want with, with a high probability. I mean, you, so at the beginning and the end of the sequence, you can have a region uh, which uh, you can have these pink regions which uh, you can generate with high probability and only a certain middle part of the protein is represented by this model. So we can also have another one, for example, repeat alignments, which will allow you to actually go back to, if, for example, there may be this region, uh, this uh, signature region of a protein sequence, which is repeated in different parts of the protein uh, sequence. 
So after you have generated this uh, signature region that tells you, uh, you may want, if, if the, this say, similar region is repeated, you need to be able to go over these states again from the beginning. And as you can see, what this allows us is that if you come to this last state, this pink state will allow you to go back to this initial match state again. So in this, in this model, after you visit the first match state, after you finish the pattern, you can go back and visit the match state again. So a repeated regions can be modeled by such a structure. And the only reason I'm showing you these are, uh, the, this is not the universal only model. For different needs, you can have you can model different states, you can design different hidden Markov models for different uh, particular needs. Okay? This, this model that we are going to use in our homework and uh, in describing the algorithms that we are going to be talking about is for global alignments. It, it's consider, it, it considers all of the sequence, all part of the sequence, the whole sequence is considered uh, and I may decide whether it's a member of a family or not. Yes? Very good question. So I'm, we are, I'm going to come to that. We are going to talk about some rules. Given a multiple sequence alignment, how do we generate uh, this model? It's going to be clear. And we can also, for that example, we can generate a hidden Markov model with this structure. And you are going to see uh, the similarities between this model and the, the one that, which, which is not similar to this generic model. Now, yeah, that's, that, this is my, uh, the, the, this is where we are coming to. How do we going to, given a multiple sequence alignment, how do we generate this profile hidden Markov model, the global uh, one, the global uh, alignment one? Now, uh, here, if we decide that we are going to use this structure to represent our protein family, uh, the only variant in this structure is, I mean, in addition to the transition and emission probabilities, is the length of this model. How many match states you are going to have? After you decide on how many match states, for example, this one has four match states. You could draw another hidden Markov model with a very similar structure, which contains 10 match states or three match states. So the first thing we need to decide after we decide on uh, we are going to use this structure for our profile hidden Markov model, the, the, the first thing we are going to do after that is uh, how many match states are we, are, are we going to have? In other words, how many conserved columns we are going to have, common amino acids, and how do we decide whether a column uh, of a multiple sequence alignment is conserved or not. As I said, we should have some rule there. Rule there. We should say uh, either half of the amino acids in that column have to be the same amino acids, or all of them have to be the same. We can have stringent rules, very strict rules, uh, to determine uh, conserved regions, or we can have loose rules saying that. If 30% of that column is the same amino acid, we can consider it as a conserved column. So this, we need to first have a rule, okay, to, so that we can determine it as a match state, as a conserved column. And this, this is a very loose one. An alignment column with no gaps can be considered as a match state. This is a very loose, very uh, least, I mean, even if you have all different amino acids in that column, this is going to be considered as a match state, okay? I mean, if you use the, this rule, okay? Uh, usually, we don't, we, I, I, in the homework, you are, I'm going to give a more strict rule. I mean, if, if you use the rule like this, you are going to have a very long hidden Markov model because the number of match state determines how large is your hidden Markov model. Uh, even if you have this many, uh, if, if many of your columns with no gaps, you may have many columns with no gaps, it means that you are going to increase the size of your hidden Markov model. If you consider only columns with majority of the columns with the same amino acids, you are going to have probably a much less number of states, which is going to give you a smaller model. So the model size is also affected by these decisions. 
And another example rule, an alignment column with a majority of gaps can be considered an insert state. If, uh, meaning that, if in an alignment column, we'll look at this example again. For example, here, this C, uh, it's, it means that this nucleotide C does not occur if, if having gaps in an alignment column means that some sequences are missing this nucleotide at that position. Okay, they are missing them, but some of them, so uh, if, if most of them are missing them, it's, it's, you can consider it as an exceptional situation for the members, it's, it's, you can consider it as, as something that is inserted by some members. Okay, it's not part of the main signature of the family, it's something just an inserted, maybe uh, less functionally, less important uh, region. Okay, this is how th this rule, uh, you, you can use it like this. And usually a threshold on the gap proportion is determined to find the match states. I mean, we usually do not say with no, with no gaps. And the delete states, we are going to have them always. We are not going, the main purpose of the delete state is to skip a match state, okay? We are going to put them, if there's a sequence uh, which skips, uh, the, which is missing one of the conserved columns. Now, after we decide on our number, of, the only thing actually we this first decide is how many match states we are going to have. What are the number of, what is the number of conserved columns? And the transition probabilities that, and after we decide on the number of states, number of match states, the, the next thing is to fill out the transition and emission probabilities. And to find the transition probabilities, uh, first we can, we can use these formulas. Uh, the transition probabilities, the outgoing arcs from a state always have to add up to one because it's a probability. Uh, therefore, uh, this, this one says that, okay, uh, except the end state which do not have any transitions from it, okay. So for all, uh, actually, uh, this, 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 is, this is a wrong formula. So it should be, uh, you, you, this should be W, okay. Uh, for, all, for, for a given state u, the transitions from that state u to uh, all states w, if you, in, you, they need to sum up to 1. Okay? This, this, there's a typo in this formula. It should be, this one should be w. Uh, so meaning that all the, this, this formula just says that all the outgoing arcs should, should be, this, their summation should add up to 1. And, yeah, this is now, uh, this makes sense now. And what we can do is, we count, in order to determine the, this transition probability from a state u to state v, this is what we can do. We count all the transitions on the given multiple alignment from an alignment position, okay, uh, and use them in the following equation to find the transition probabilities from a state. In other words, we do something like this. By looking at, th this V here is a particular state. It's, uh, it's like this. If we go back to here, uh, if we go back to here, okay, this U, if U is this, okay, if uh, U is this first match state, and I want to determine, and uh, imagine this is V, okay, this is U, this is V, and I want to determine the transition probability on this arc here, on this edge from u to v. What we do is, we count, we, we look at the multiple alignment. In how many of these, in, in this multiple alignment, how many sequences have a direct, uh, I mean, have amino acids directly occurring, I mean, this from this conserved amino acid, and Immediately after that conserved amino acid, we see another conserved amino acid, which corresponds to the second match state. In how many of the sequences we have this? We count, we just have a count, okay? I'm going to do an example, it's going to be much more clear, but we just count how many of the protein sequences directly go from this matched uh, conserved amino acid to the uh, other conserved amino acids. 
For example, in, in our alignment, there may be 10 sequences. Five of them uh, may go uh, to this state, so it's going to be five. And actually, uh, and the total number of, and also we do uh, the total, total count, okay? This total count is going to be 10. There are 10 uh, sequences in our list. Uh, and this, this, this one shows that uh, just count all the transitions to uh, all possible states. It's going to be 10 at the end, okay? Five of them coming from this. For example, three of them may go to an insertion state and two of them may skip the next match state and go to the third match state, okay? And at the end, this is going to be our, our probability is going to be 0 0.5. So out of all the sequences in your alignment, how many of them, what percentage of them go directly from match state 1 to match state 2? So we do the simple counting in order to determine transition probabilities. And emission probabilities uh, also. Now, this is how we determine transition probabilities by simple counting. And also, uh, let's look at now emission probabilities. And in, in, in emission probabilities in a match or uh, insert state, they also need to add up to one. They are also probabilities. And in a match state, we can simply count how many, uh, we can simply count the amino acid frequencies. We can use the amino acid frequencies in that column as emission probabilities. This is uh, trivial. I mean, just as this example, okay. We look at this conserved column, 80% A, 20% T. We, we use this as emission probabilities, 0 0.8 and 0 0.2. And for emission probabilities at insertion state, we can just assume that without using anything related to the alignments, we can just assume arbitrary amino acids can be emitted at insert states. So regardless of what our alignment shows us, we can use the background amino acid observation frequencies in nature. So these PAs corresponds to in nature, in, uh, if you look at all the sequences in uh, all protein sequence, in a protein sequence database, what is the uh, frequency of occurrence of uh, amino acid A? Uh, we can use this as an amino acid emission probabilities at an insert state. Uh, in addition, uh, if we, if we use, directly use this formula, the emission probability of C and G in that example I show you is going to be zero because their counts in that column, we don't, since we do not observe any C or any G, uh, they are going to be zero. Therefore, we can use pseudo counts uh, to add this. Even if this number is zero for C and G, this NMUC and NMUG are going to be zero but still we can assume they occur at least once in that column, which is going to give them a smaller uh, probability. Okay, this is how we determine emission, emission probabilities. And let me now uh, do an example. Actually, we can directly uh, try to create a hidden Markov model with the uh, insert delete uh, states uh, that corresponds to the, this uh, multiple sequence alignment. Now, uh, if you, let me assume I have this rule. If the majority of uh, amino acids or nucleotides in a column are the same, same, exactly the same, then I assume that's a conserved column. I just have this 0 0.5 threshold. Now, if, if you do that in this assignment, you are going to have six match columns. So the, after we decide on that, we just draw the uh, match states. And M6. And we have, uh, we directly, uh, we, we go to an end state after that. We have this begin and end states. Okay. Now. This is our sequence. So what we are going to do is first we need to decide uh, from the begin state, we could also go to an insert state, okay? Now I'm going to have insert state for all of them. And we are going to see that some of these insert states 
are not even going to be visited at all. So we can ignore them. We, we will be able to delete them from our model. And we also have delete states for each of them. Okay, so after you, you, after you decide on the match states, you draw all of your states, okay? The delete states. So here, what we, what we are going to see is that these transition probabilities are going to be zero. Because from the begin state, this is the, the starting probability from begin state is 1.0. We are going to start at this state. And we are going to count by looking at these sequences, how many of them are missing the first column or how many of them have some additional sequences in front of the first conserved column? The answer to that is none, okay? All of the sequences, all of these five sequences have the, their conserved column. So therefore these two transition probabilities, so all of the sequences go from the begin state directly to the match state. So what I have here is probability 1.0. Now, uh, from the second match state, I can go to uh, this one, or I can go to this one to skip. As you can see, since I did not visit these states, these states, uh, there, there are no incoming arcs. If you have visited here, there are no incoming arcs from M1 uh, to this insert state or this delete state. The incoming arcs are to these insert and delete states. So the, it will be impossible for this see the Marco model, it will be impossible to visit these states because of these transition probabilities zero. So I can actually delete these states from my uh, hidden Marco model because they will never be visited. Okay? Uh, and from M1 to M2, the same situation. I look at my sequences. All of the five sequences go from the first match state to the second match state. All of them. So. I can have, I'm going to have 1.0 like this, and these are never going to be visited. I can also uh, delete them because the transition probabilities here are going to be zero. Now, what you can ask is that, you can suggest is that, why don't we use the, so for emission probabilities, we have this pseudo counts, right? Why don't we have a similar thing for insert and delete states? Maybe, uh, imagine if there was a sequence which did not start with a C or a G, uh, but again, it started with an A, but is an additional A at, at this point. I mean, imagine there's a sequence with an additional nucleotide in the, in the middle, in the, at the beginning, in addition to these match states. Uh, again, since we said that insertion is impossible, or imagine there's a sequence which is missing the first match state and directly starts at the second match state. The probability to generate such sequence again is going to be zero because we said that these sequences have to have match states. They cannot, we cannot skip a match state in this model. So similar to pseudo counts, we can retain these insertion and delete states and we can have uh, a very small transition probabilities to these states. That's uh, similar to pseudo counts, we can have um, pseudo transitions something like that. I, I don't know whether it's uh, usable. It must, there must be uh, solutions that employ uh, this idea, uh, but for, for our purposes uh, now, let's assume that we, our model is going to be like this. We actually deleted these. And from M2 to M3, again, we directly visit these. All of them have, have that. Now, from M3 to M4, the situation is more complex. Now, the first thing is, there is no amino acid. Actually, we, don't, we will not have any delete states at all in this model. Why is that? Because there is no sequence who is missing a match state. All of our five sequences have some amino acids in that conserved column. These conserved columns do not have any gaps in them. So it means that all sequences emit something at that conserved column, so no sequence is going to ever visit a delete state in this family. So actually we can, uh, with this observation, we can delete all, all of our uh, delete states. 
If there was a sequence, for example, if we had here this A missing, okay? Imagine I close this A with my hand, okay? Imagine that fourth sequence did not have an A at that position. What we would have is that we would have from after M3, we would have a delete state. Sorry, the delete, the main purpose of delete state is to skip this M4. So we would have this delete state to accommodate for this fourth sequence, which is missing this amino acid A at that position. So you can see uh, that hand, I close it. If we had a gap in that position, for, this, for that sequence to be able to jump from M mesh concert column state three to, actually, first it jumps to an insert, no, it doesn't have an insert state, uh, so it directly jumps from M3 to M5 to be able to have uh, to be able to skip this part, which, which corresponds to that concert column with A's, okay? This M4 represents the match state with all A's. And if that sequence does not have an A, if it's missing it, we need to have this delete state to jump from M3 to M5. That's the main reason of delete states, to skip concert columns. But all of them have something uh, in their match state, I uh, mean in the concert column, so we are not going to have a delete state. Now, let's come to uh, this part. From M3, not all of the sequences go to M4 directly, okay? As you can see, how many of them go to M4 directly? Only two of them, okay? Out of these uh, five sequences, two of them, this one, uh, I mean the first one and the fourth one, go directly from M3 to M4, and three of them go to an insertion state. So it's going to be uh, like this, from M3 to M4, 0 0.4 probability, we go to uh, match state four. How did I compute this 0 0.4? Uh, I counted the transitions from M3 to M4, from M3 to M4, I have two such transitions, the sequence uh, one and sequence four, and the total number of transition I, transitions I had is uh, the others are going from this state uh, to an insert state, again from this state to insert state, uh, this state to insert state. There are uh, three transitions, uh, three transitions from M3 to uh, this insert state, which gives me 0 0.4. And the other part, since they need to add up to one, I, I mean, I can put the remaining 0 0.6 to this insert state. Now, here's the tricky part. How, what is the, now I, I need to find this out. From this insert state, I can stay at the insert state, or I can go to match state four. Okay, some of them, at this point, I need to exit this insert state and go to match state four. And actually all of them goes to match state four. You don't need to visit a delete state here. Now, how, what, how are we going to determine this probability? After I came to an insert state, I, I'm going to do uh, this counting. Okay, after I emitted something. These three of them emitted uh, one letter. And what will happen in the next state? So three of, uh, so I'm only considering, at this point, I'm only considering three sequences. I don't have five sequences anymore. If, if I'm going to find out the transition probability at this state, I need to only consider the sequences who actually arrive at this state. And there are three of them. So out of these three sequences, how many of them have visited the insert state again? Only one of them, okay? Two of them, I mean these, it just, you need to now look at this ACT region, the C gap gap region, and G gap gap region. So only one of them, which is the ACT, visits the insert state again. The C and G directly goes to M4. Then therefore, what we are going to have is that we are going to have a 0.33 probability uh, 
staying uh, at the same and 0.66 probability we are going to go to match state M4 and the others is, are going to be 1.0 1.0 okay that's it so our hidden Markov model is going to uh, look like this uh, for this one and it actually it looks very much like uh, this one okay the only thing is this 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 uh, is uh, the transition probabilities are different here. It said that with 0 0.4 probability, uh, it's going to uh, stay at the same. Okay, why did it do 0 0.4? I'm going to uh, tell you now. And actually, uh, if we count, okay. Okay, this 0 0.33, we may have done something wrong here. Because uh, if you remember the transition formula, in this, from this uh, state u, when we, are state, when we are at state u, we need to count all the cases in all the multiple alignment. How many times we go from insert state to insert state? Now, it's the count should be like this. It's good that I did this error. It's going to demonstrate how we actually find the, uh, these transition probabilities. Now, let's look at these sequences again. Uh, that we are at insert state. So, uh, from this insert state, considering the whole multiple sequence alignment, we have actually not three things. We have four things. A transition from A to C, a transition from C to T, a transition from C to uh, M4, another, another transition uh, from G to M4, and then uh, a transition from T to M4. Okay, so these AC, so uh, it's now, I'm going to do it again, uh, watch this part carefully. So this is, this A, if I emitted this A, it means that I'm at an insert state. If I emitted this C after this A, it means that I have a transition from an insert state to insert state. So this, this counts for one. So from insert to insert, okay, this is one. And then I have still here at this C, I'm still at the insert state. So I need to count the transition from C to T also, because in this, the formula, I count in all, all of the alignment, I need to count how many times all the transitions from that insert state to another state. And the second transition from C to T is also a transition from an insert state to an insert state. So I need to also count that as an insert to insert uh, transition and then uh, also this and then I have from T to this A the last one it's a transition from insert state to a match state okay this M4 state and these C and G's at the, at the third and five, fifth sequences are also transitions from uh, I to M4 so these are all the transitions I'm going to have from that specific insert state. As you can see, there are no, it's not three. I have uh, five transitions there, okay? From that insert state, considering the whole alignment, if I'm at that insert state, I'm going to observe uh, a total of five transitions from that insert state and after you, you have this, then you can easily find the transition probabilities. If you have this picture, all you need to do is uh, the transition from I to I is going to be uh, 2 divided by the total number of these transitions. It's going to be therefore 0 0.4, okay? This 0 0.4 uh, is the correct one in this alignment. It's going to be 0 0.4 and the remaining 0 0.6 is going to go to this alignment. So as you can see, uh, just the, the difference of the profile of the Marco model and this one is just to make, to visualize this state as a diamond state. Actually, this is also a profile of the Marco model, only the visualization is different. Yes? Yes, 
if, if one sequence, so and a critical thing here is that each of these sequences here, each of, a, each of these members here, they're going to follow a unique path on the hidden Markov model. They are not going to, unlike, I mean, there may be uh, multiple paths that have generated the same sequence, okay? There may be multiple paths, but we are going to uh, assume that by, since we know what the multiple alignment, okay? If, if, we, you, if we are not given the multiple alignment, imagine if somebody tells you that you just have AGA, ATC, okay? Now, if you're just given the sequence, you may not know which states have generated these letters exactly. For example, this fourth A may be generated by the insert state. It's possible, completely possible. But the alignment, if somebody gives you the alignment, it exactly shows you which states generated these letters. Having this A in the, I mean, in the alignment, we could have aligned by mistake, this A could have been aligned here, okay? If it was aligned here, it means that it is emitted by the insert state. But having this multiple alignment, by looking at the multiple alignment, you can uniquely, you can draw a single path for that sequence on the Sido Markov model. Okay, that's, that's very important. For each sequence, given the multiple alignment, that's, that's also very important. Given the multiple alignment, if you are given the multiple alignment, you can actually uh, find, out, uh, find out a single path, the best path that have generated uh, this sequence. You don't need to uh, run the, you don't need to execute the Viterbi algorithm. So the multiple sequence alignment gives you some information and we use that information when determining these transition probabilities. If we had, I mean, if we had a gap in this alignment here, it means that that sequence did not generate anything at that match state. And the only way to generate nothing at the match state is to skip that match state. And, that the, and that's what the delete state's purpose is. Okay? Yes. Uh, multiple and non columns beside the column. Yeah. In the other case, we will not have any. No. Columns. No. The only loop, uh, loop edge, uh, the only self transition we have is for the insert states. And again, this is a design choice. Uh, and also, this, I mean, you could have something else. You could have said that at an insert state, I do not allow a self loop, self transition, but I model it by having multiple insert states. For example, we could have, by seeing this, we can say that we can have an insertion of length at most three. If you do not want to allow insertions more than three, to model this, instead of a single insert state, you can put three insert states after the match three state, okay? With no self transitions. Uh, and go, the probability of going from the first and say state directly to the match state or the first to second and second to third. So, and you can avoid self transitions in this way. And in this way, you will not allow any sequence of more than three inserts to be member of the same family. You could, I mean, this, this is a design choice. This, the the model, model, design, model, model design choice. And, and, yeah, I'm going to uh, have a break at this point, and I'm going to uh, talk about uh, the Viterbi algorithm uh, after that. Okay, so let's have a break. Uh, a question? Which one? From M3 to, oh yes, let's see, M3, so this is, this is the M3 state. 
So M3 to M4 and M3 to uh, insert. Again, M3 to insert, M3 to M4, M3 to insert. So there are uh, five possibilities, right? So, so if, if, we, if we count all the transitions from, that happens from M3, uh, there are five cases. Yeah, even if it's the same, it's counted. Okay, I mean, we do not count individual, even if they are both A's, they are still counted as separate transitions. Okay, we do not count, I mean, this example may be misleading to you that they are all transitions from a different letter to different letter. We count all of them. Even if I had another A to C, I would have counted it as another transition. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. So the, the question is, if we have for this, the, the third sequence, we are at the insert state, something, uh, a sequence that have visited an insert state may also want to skip uh, the match state four. So we should be able to have a mechanism to go to insert state to a delete state or directly to match state. So the, and it, it can be accomplished in two ways. Either from insert state to directly to a, a match state five or insert state to a delete state then match state four. And I prefer the latter, the second one, because uh, you don't want to go from that insert state, the natural path is to match state three. If you want to skip match state three, use the delete state for that. Okay, that's the, what the delete state purpose is. If you want to skip match state three, from that insert state, you should first go to delete state and then uh, go to a match, four, match, fifth, match five state. What would be the problem with the problem? Okay, so let's also uh, imagine we don't have this. From that insert state, we are going to have uh, another uh, transition. So this one, one of these, is going to be from insert to delete. Okay, and you can compute the probability is going to be 0 0.2. And the, it's going to take some probability from this I to M4. This is what the complete picture is going to be. Exactly. Mm -hmm. three. Mm -hmm. not, not three sequences which visit the insert state. So when we are thinking about talking about this, we are going to ignore the sequences which does not ever visit these states. No, no, no. Even uh, um, no, there are three sequences, but in we observe these five things in those three sequences. I mean, we are looking at states. These are not sequence by sequence. Look at this. This one, AC, CT, and C to M4. These, all these transitions come from the third sequence. No, the second sequence. Okay? We are still only considering the ones who visited them. And the final thing before the break I want to tell is that also mm, delete states are really interesting states, right? They do not emit anything. In a delete state, they are irregular hidden Markov models. They are uh, contrary to the original hidden Markov definition. We have, we need to emit something when we arrive at state. And delete states are very special states. Uh, they are uh, different than original hidden Markov models. When we arrive at a delete state, we do not emit anything. Okay? It's not like we, that's the, we do not emit a gap, okay? These sequences, emission, ga gaps are not emitted. I mean, a sequence is like this. You do not, in a protein sequence, you don't have a gap. Gap is not an amino acid, okay? Gap is something that you use in a multiple alignment, okay? Gap is not an observable symbol in a sequence, okay? So this is very important. We do not emit gaps. Gap emission, none of these are the Marco models. We say we emit gaps. We do not do that. 
Okay. The, the delete states, their main purpose is to skip uh, the match states. So let's have a break, then we continue afterwards.